So one of my favorite things about the autumn months is when I go to a park, park away from all the cars and exhaust, walking in a wooded area with shrubs, trees, leaves, flowers. That smell in the air during the autumn months is most amazing. And I love the idea of fragrances that smell like that. And that's exactly what I'm doing today in this video. I've got 20 fragrances here that smell like autumn this exact scene that I just told you about. If you're curious to learn about these fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, one of my favorite things to do is go for walks in the autumn months. It's still pretty warm during the day here in uh, California. During the night, it gets a bit cooler and a bit chilly sometimes. And in the afternoons or evenings when you're walking in these parks, there's a smell in the air because everything's been baking in the warm sun. But in the evening when it's chilly or cooler, there's this aroma in the air of the leaves and the trees and the flowers and the shrubs. There's this really, really amazing smell. Just totally smells like autumn. And that's the kind of fragrances today's uh, video features. And we've got a lot of fragrances that feature vetiver and also immortel because I feel like these two notes are very much the smell of what autumn in California smells like. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the first fragrance. It's called Lode Immortel from uh, Voyage Imaginaire. This is it right here. And this one features uh, the note of Immortel, and that's exactly what I was thinking about. So I did a video on this house, an amazing all-natural perfumery house. So those of you that are not into synthetic fragrances or fragrances that feature synthetic notes, this is definitely a house you're going to have to look into because all of their fragrances are all natural. So this features Immortel, and to me this Immortel note smells of autumn. It's dry and grassy, kind of a floral note that just totally takes on the characteristic of smelling like the scene that I was telling you about. Dried leaves, shrubs, and trees, and things like that. That's exactly what I get with this one, but this one kind of goes into a warm and spicy ambery direction. In addition to the Immortel, we've got labdanum here, amorous, benzoin, amber, bergamot, vanilla, tonka beans, chocolate. There's something very, very scent memory-like about this one. I think it kind of reminds me a little bit of Anikutal's uh, Sable fragrance. If you guys are familiar with that, definitely check this one out because I believe the perfumer behind this also created Sable. But it's an amazing fragrance. The chocolate kind of gives you a bit of a gourmand edge to this. So sweet and dry and grassy and leafy. Wonderful offering. This is Lode Immortel from the House of Voyage Imaginaire. That's the first fragrance we're going to start off with. I should also say I love these caps. They're so kind of vintage looking caps. Everything about that brand is just amazing. Hopefully you guys will get to check out that brand. Moving on to a house called Ex Nihilo. It's French Affair, this one right here. And when I did a video on the fragrances of Ex Nihilo recently, I said this fragrance reminds me of autumn because it's dry, grassy, earthy, woody, and because it features the note of vetiver. In the end, it's a cheaper fragrance because it also has rose and patchouli. But when I'm wearing it, it's, I'm reminded of this kind of the scene that I told you about, the dry, leaves, shrubs, trees, and all that kind of stuff, baking under the sun during the day, cool and breezy and chilly at night, but the aroma is captured in the air. That's the kind of uh, experience I get with this one, but it's lots of vetiver with oak moss. There's that rose and patchouli, there's cedar, angelica, so it's a bit vegetal, violet leaves add some ozonic touches, lychee fruit and bergamot. It's a great, great fragrance. Quinton Biche created this one and he did a great job. French Affair from the house of Ex Nihilo. But moving on to the house of Javoy, this is a autumn staple for me from the house of Javoy. It's Incident Diplomatique. This one right here. Can we focus? There we go. So this one to me is a cross between vetiver and patchouli. It's got two kinds of vetiver here. It's got loads of patchouli, both earth, earthy, woody notes. And for me, the idea of earthy, woody, light, leafy, grassy, and all these kind of notes are, you know, the, the kind of notes I'm talking about for the fragrances that smell like autumn. And this to me does smell like autumn. So the vetiver and the patchouli together work really beautifully here. They've thrown in some warm spiciness of nutmeg along with sandalwood, mandarin orange, so a bit of sweetness there. Lots of woods though and lots of earthy characteristics but the vetiver is dry, grassy, leafy and totally totally reminds me of the autumn smells that I was telling you about. This is Incident Diplomatique from the House of Javoy. Check that out if you don't know it. Come on let's focus there. 
But moving on, we've got another Immortel focused fragrance going to the house called Parfum de Empire. This is Immortel Course. This one right here basically translates to Immortel from Corsica. I believe the perfumer is originally, originally born in Corsica or is from Corsica, uh, Marc Antoine Corticchiato, who does all the perfumes of this brand. If you don't know this brand, please go catch their you know, fragrance, I mean the videos, because I've done a lot of videos uh, on the brand. And I think definitely a very underrated house that's definitely worth checking out. Well, once again, this is Immortel. It's got this kind of grassy, dry, leafy kind of characteristic in fragrance. You, you can totally smell it. Here, that's what it smells like. But we've also got some dried, not dried, but like fruitiness of apricots in here, along with some saffron, oak moss, and lemons. To me, it wears a bit of dry, leafy, also fruity kind of a smell during the autumn months. It's a very, very interesting fragrance, totally giving a paying tribute to the Immortel note. And this is a note that you should definitely discover because for me, the flower is like dry, like it's a dry flower. But along the way, you can get all these different nuances from it. It can go brown, sugary, caramelly, dry and earthy, leafy, and all these things come to mind with this flower. But Immortel Coarse from the house of Parfum the Empire is a really, really great fragrance. But speaking of Immortel, we've got another one, very popular in the fragrance community. This is Marc Antoine Barrois' Ganymede. This is it right here. So Immortel is really prominent here, right? But there's also suede leather, violet leaves, mandarin orange, akigala wood, and a lot of the staples that Quinton Biche is known for. But this to me, even though it has some muskiness as well, it's very ozonic and also very gr dry, grassy, leafy, woody as well. Definitely the leather idea comes to mind, but the, the whole entire concoction is super, super sexy and absolutely love it. But for me, when I'm wearing it, it's that dry, grassy, earthy, woody, leafy kind of characteristic and totally puts me in the autumn vibe. And I like that about it. So recently I did a video and some folks said they don't care for this fragrance, but I feel like there's a lot more fans of this than haters of this. But let me know if you're a fan of uh, Ganymede or if you're a hater of Ganymede, put a comment down. So Ganymede from the house of Marc-Antoine Barrois. All right, the next fragrance I'm talking about is from a house called Jacques Fat. This is Tempête d'Autumn. I believe it stands for Autumn Winds, something like that. And this is a kind of a gourmandish take on something that smells woody, earthy, green and leaf. Not greeny, green, but leafy. Uh, but very, very earthy at the same time. Lots of woods here, like sandalwood, but there's also milk note here. But there's a lot of warm, spicy touches and also aromatic, earthy touches as well, like lavender. But in addition to that, we've got tonka beans, leather, coriander, and mandarin orange. It's a super delicious fragrance, but totally puts me in the kind of a very cozy autumn vibe. Warm, spicy, earthy, woody is what the characteristics or accords are with this fragrance, but definitely one that you should check out if you're into the idea of fragrances that smell like autumn. This is Tempête d'Autumn from the house of Jacques Fat. Check it out if you don't know that one. But this next fragrance from the house of Gucci is The Last Day of Summer right here. Last Day of Summer to me is the ultimate in uh, autumn smelling fragrances. The last day of summer, obviously it's right before autumn starts. And to me, Gucci has done a really, really great fragrance here, capturing the smell of, at least for me, California autumn. Warm days, cool nights, cool evenings, or maybe something like, you know, Indian summer weather, things like that. But the cypress here, vetiver, cedar, nutmeg, patchouli, there's some spice, there's some earthiness. The spice is warming up the, the fragrance here, but not necessarily going into the holiday spice direction because it's just right after, you know, the summer when it's ending and then not necessarily like towards the winter when it's warm spices and Christmas spices and things like that. But for me, this one, the, the vetiver, the cedar, and the cypress with its interesting green, camphoric, aromatic smell of that interesting note totally does really, really a great job smelling like autumn for me. A perfect, perfect example. So if you haven't tried The Last Day of Summer from Gucci, definitely check that out. I think you're going to like that. I think it's definitely a really great fragrance. But moving on to the House of Zoologist perfumes, this is Tiger, this one right here. Not Tiger from Bulgari, but Tiger from Zoologist perfumes. When I shot my video 
review of this fragrance. I mentioned in that video how dry this fragrance is. It's extremely dry with all these dry notes with a very, very potent vetiver note. To me, this puts me in the place of that park. Literally puts me there with all the shrubs, the leaves, and even flowers there all dried up right before winter when everything starts getting soggy and it's going to rain. But lots of dry woods and it's the vetiver note, very grassy, earthy, woody here. Lightly dampy, but there's definitely a powdery characteristic here and I feel like there's powder dust collected on all the shrubs and leaves and and then the woods and things like that so you can actually see the powder floating in air but with this one with vetiver ebony wood papyrus kumquat so it's a bit sweet tart citrusy lots of saffron here cardamom incense carrot seed sambac jasmine suede and ambrette seeds really really wonderful fragrance that really puts me in the place of autumn the smell of autumn here or fall tiger from the house of zoologist perfumes and this turned out to be one of my favorite fragrances from this house the same perfumer as b totally different fragrances b happens to be my favorite fragrance from this house this is definitely a favorite of mine as well from the house there's some that are pretty challenging to wear this one is a great fragrance for the vetiver lover so it's tiger from the house of zoologist perfumes check that out if you don't know it but the next fragrance going to the house of l'artisan parfumer this is timbuktu this is it right here timbuktu is a fragrance i keep forgetting about but when i pull it I always think it's such a great release, such a great fragrance created by Bertrand de Chaffou. And also it smells of autumn because it's got that vetiver once again with a bit of sweet fruitiness from mango in here, some smokiness from incense. There's also the papyrus, which is kind of like an interesting note, dry, earthy, woody, kind of has a characteristic of vetiver and patchouli together. Then along the way, you also have some resinous notes of myrrh, patchouli, benzoin resin, and also cardamom. Very much like autumn smell. Just a really beautiful fragrance and I love it because it also ha it also has that patchouli so it creates a bit of a sexiness really enjoy this one it's Timbuktu still going strong for l'artisan parfumer and I think if you haven't tried it yet definitely check that out because it's definitely a great great release from that house and another fragrance that's also really ultimate in the autumn smelling fragrances it's from the house of Etat Libre Orange this is like this this one right here so like this is a fragrance that has the notes of Immortel along with pumpkin. Remember I said Immortel to me feels like autumn because it's that dry, leafy, woody kind of a characteristic with that flower. And then also you've got pumpkin in this along with the way you have ginger, tangerine, heliotrope, vetiver, musk, neroli, and rose. But for me, it's the pumpkin, Immortel, and ginger playing together wonderfully to create this very autumn-like aroma in this fragrance really wears great it's a bit fresh a little powdery musky as well and some citrusy touches go in there as well but to me it smells of autumn totally does but more of a warmer autumn when it's still kind of warm outside it's not necessarily kind of dark and cold and things like that so there's a there's brightness about it and i also see that in the label here it's kind of a sunny brightness there but either way like this from the house of Etat Libre Orange is really great. Next, going to the house of Nishane, it's Taro. This one right here. So Taro also, it's got that very, uh, you know, earthy, dry woodiness here mixed in with a salty caramel note to give you some contrast. But the rest of the fragrance is spicy, woody, earthy with notes of black pepper, Sichuan pepper, patchouli, cinnamon bark, vetiver, amber, oak wood. So it's all these woody notes, especially the vetiver, the patchouli with their earthy qualities, the oak wood in this one, and then the spices mixed or blended together that's creating this kind of uh, autumn-like aroma. But with this one, you've got all that stuff, but you also have this kind of a Gourmand edge about it, saltiness, caramel sweetness, really wonderful offering. There's the four fragrances that came out together with this fragrance that was a, a great collection of scents, but for me in that collection, I really enjoyed Taro created by Carlos Benayim. So that is Taro from the house of Nishane, but moving on to the house of Mansera, it's Hindu Kush. Yes, I do put this one in this kind of autumn smelling list. Because to me, it does have that autumn smelling vibe. It's a lot of woods once again with some smokiness from incense. It's woods and spices and you do have the cannabis. And the cannabis, once again, I always mention, it doesn't really smell too much like cannabis or marijuana, but it's this kind of bitter green smell that's contrasted throughout all the woods and spices 
to give you this really nice contrast to split the fragrance into half to like you're gonna smell this contrast coming through with the very interesting lightly camphoric note of the cannabis that's in here whatever kind of cannabis they have but it's a great scent there's a creamy quality about it some lightly vanillic touches as well some amber but really dry and woody earthy and smells of autumn for sure so it's hindu kush from the house of mancera it's a great scent i know there's lovers of that fragrance and haters as well you can't always have everyone loving the same fragrance of course but moving on to the house of frappan this is if by rk this one right here so this one actually i should say this house is very very underrated they are known for cognac in france but they also are known for fragrances but i think they're a bit more popular and a bit more hyped in france than they are here nobody really talks about them and for me if by rk is one of the fragrances from their collection that smells of autumn it's lots of woods a bit of zingy spice from ginger there's cashmere for its muskiness and with this one there's a light fruitiness thrown in with the fig and i feel like figs kind of really come alive late summer in the early fall or autumn so for me i think this is appropriate to feature this in here along with the fig there's also guyac wood tonka beans and patchouli so it's very woody it's a bit creamy lightly fruity and musky but for me it puts me in the place of uh you know autumn like in that park, once again, the smell of all the shrubs, the leaves, and the trees, whatever that smell is in the air in the afternoon after the sun has baked everything, uh, it's right here captured in a fragrance with a little bit of the fruitiness from the fig. So this is If by RK from the House of Frappan. Let me know if you know that fragrance. Uh, put a comment down below. But we're moving to another fairly unknown house. This is Atelier Oblique and its Light Falls, this one right here. So Light Falls is, to me, the ultimate in autumn smelling fragrance from this house. To me, all the notes smell of autumn. It's got that kind of dry, earthy woodiness, a bit leafy as well. Lots of sandalwood here, lots of woodsy notes. There's a note called woody amber, so it's amber and woods together, but also saffron. Saffron is a very dry note to me. Could be very spicy and also a bit leathery, but for me, it smells of leather fabric rather than like leather, leather animalic which is really interesting to give you this kind of dryness for this fragrance. But there's vetiver, pink pepper, timur pepper as well. So the combination is spicy, woody, earthy, a bit leathery, and also ambery. Totally does put me in the place of autumn. Really great smell, but it's a bit on the sweeter side, which makes for a very interesting wear if you like the idea of what it smells like outside in Northern California in the woods. Anyway, this is Light Falls. And I think the name for this fragrance also kind of kind of gives me that autumn-like vibe as well. So up next, going to the house of Sospiro, it's Basso. This one right here. So this one to me, I did a video with Joe. If you haven't caught that video on Sospiro fragrances, you should definitely catch it. We said in the video that a lot of the fragrances of Sospiro are very dry. They're potent kind of fragrances, but very dry. And for me, out of all of the fragrances, this one does put me in the place of autumn. It also kind of reminds me of Terre Hermes a little bit, not necessarily identical, but it has that kind of hint at it. So it kind of reminds me of Terre Hermes. But once again, lots of woods here, woods, spices, and the combination together creates this very autumn-like vibe. Lots of sandalwood here, oak moss, vetiver, labdanum, a little bit of nutmeg, guyac wood, carnation, grapefruit, and cedar. So basically it's mostly woods with a little spices in there, some very interesting notes like car carnation, and then of course grapefruit for a bit of freshness. But in the end, yeah, there's a bit of a reminder of Terre Hermes, but in a different direction. But really, the whole idea of this fragrance reminds me of Autumn, which is really fantastic. Plus, the longevity is really great on it as well. So, Basso from the House of Sospiro is a great fragrance. Let me know if you're a fan of that fragrance in that house. If you have caught my video with Joe, overview of the house, do let me know as well. But moving on to the House of Celine, this is... Bois Dormand, this one right here. This was the last fragrance they've launched and I've been told that they're launching one or two new fragrances, but I haven't heard when they're gonna come. Some some of their sales associates told, told me they're working on something new. But for me, this one is the woodiest and the most masculine in the collection, I think. It's just very, very woody. And it's got their signature Oris note because I feel like the Oris note is kind of signature for them running throughout a lot of their fragrances. But in addition to that note, we've got cedar, vetiver, bergamot, and juniper berries. So the bergamot adds that freshness because it needs a little 
of freshness because it's all very powdery and woody. But then there's got that juniper berry to give you that kind of lightly metallic, ice cold, aromatic, spicy touch. But the rest of it is all very woody. So it kind of gives me that very, very autumn like smell with a bit of powder and freshness from the bergamot. Really great fragrance. I really love the DNA of Celine fragrances. And this is definitely a great fragrance from them. This is Bois Dormand from Celine. Next, going to a small indie niche house from Italy. This is from Claudio Zucca Parfums Mineral Wood. This is it right here. And again, this one to me, it's the ultimate in smelling like autumn leaves. It's got sweet orange, cypress, olibanum resinoid, ISOE super, tangerine, olibanum, bergamot, musk accord, Haitian vetiver, cedarwood, sandalwood, oak, and smoke. But really when you smell this, it smells of autumn with some citruses thrown in, perhaps very California. Really love the way autumn smells, especially like I said, if you walk into the parks, fragrances all around you, you pick up all this kind of naturalistic smells, very earthy, woody smells, leafy as well, grassy, and you get that here. Really great. Totally, totally puts me in the place of autumn smells. Warm sun during the day, cool air, cool night. Exactly what you get here with mineral wood from the house of Claudio Zucca Parfums. That's an Italian house. Go check out my video on that fragrance and a few others. But moving on to a house called Spiritum. This is Shamanism, this one right here. I believe this fragrance is supposed to be like their booster primer or their musk where you can use it to layer with a lot of their other fragrances. It's a fairly new house uh, that i have um, speaking about here. But for me, this one, it's so dry, dusty, woody, powdery, and musky that totally puts me in that setting once again. Dry woods, dry leaves, earthiness, ozonic touches all mixed in together. But it features notes of sandalwood, musk, cinnamon, cypress, cedar, moss, tonka, vanilla, orris, myrrh, vetiver, amber. A lot of stuff going on with this one, a lot. You'll notice it when you're wearing it, but you're kind of swimming in like a musky, cloudy, parf like a powder, lots of it. Really, really wonderful that, and that the smell is definitely just like dust covered leaves and shrubs and then the smell of the all the kind of like the shrubbery. Anyway, Shamanism from Spiritum Parfums. Check that out if you don't know it. Fairly new house. We've got two more fragrances left. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is Lumari's Maidan. This one right here. And this one to me does remind me of that setting, but a bit warm, spicy, fruity at the same time. Because it does have cinnamon as a note and it's pretty prominent. You definitely get to picture and smell this note along with some kind of dry, earth, like earthy aromatics like thyme and lavender. But they've got apples in here, sandalwood, black pepper, amberwood, vanilla, saffron, black currant, and patchouli. But the idea is that kind of dry, earthy woodiness the, the park that I was telling you about with the leaves and all the shrubbery, but also like you're having some kind of a sweet baked, I wouldn't say like tart tartan, like an apple pie or something with the spices and all that kind of stuff mixed in together. Really delicious fragrance, I think. You guys are gonna like this one. Their more popular fragrance, Porthole, is probably one that a lot of people like, but this one's pretty underrated. And if you like the idea of autumn-like smells with some kind of gourmand notes thrown in, definitely check out Maidan from Lumari. And then last but not least, I'm ending this list with one of my favorite, favorite fragrances that smells of autumn. This is from the house of Dorsey, and it's, uh, I'm gonna try and say this, J'approche en mystère AC. So they have two names, as you can see on the label here. We've got the French name, and then of course the initials AC. So, oh my God, this stuff is so super sexy. I love it, and it totally transports me to autumn in Northern California with fig trees. So for me, I've, I'm, I love figs, and I notice figs you know, like ripen towards the end of summer and into the autumn months. So as I said, California, Northern California, warm during the day, cooler at night, and you see these figs growing. So it's all dusty, dry shrubs, and then also the smell of the naturalistic fig trees, because they're all still green. The the, the fig trees don't don't get like, golden colored or yellow and you've got this kind of contrast of smells but here they've got this so beautiful combination the two together intoxicating really wonderful but very dry very earthy very dry and leafy as well and then also that green leaf contrast coming through the fragrance this is amazing one of my favorite fragrances from this house in fact 
I put it at number one when I did a video on the house and overview. If you haven't caught that review, go catch it. But either way, this is J'approche au mystère from the house of Dorsey. Really wonderful offering from that house. Anyway, those are the uh, fragrances from this uh, list of fragrances that smell like autumn. Reminding me of that setting where you go to a park, you know, there's no cars, exhaust, it's just woods, leaves, shrubs, and that smell in the air of autumn smell, dry, dusty, powdery, woody. That's exactly what these fragrances are. Let me know if you like these fragrances and let me know if you're curious to try them. And if you have a fragrance that you know, smells like that setting I was telling you about, put a comment down so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So last but not least, I wanted to highlight this fragrance as a bonus and also warn you guys that it's been discontinued. At least that's what I was told recently. This to me does smell like autumn. It is from the house of Guerlain. It's Bois Mysterio, this one right here. So I was told recently this is discontinued. It's a shame, it's a bummer that it's discontinued, but that's the way it is with fragrances when they don't sell. Uh, but this is one of my favorite fragrances from this house and I absolutely love it. It's cedar, patchouli, myrrh, leather, bay laurel, jasmine, neroli, and I also get a cumin in here which is super, super sexy. It's a very dry, woody, earthy fragrance with some aromatics and spices thrown in and resinous touches as well. And of course, I love the cumin spice in here and totally puts me in, in the place of a very spicy, woody, autumn, earthy smelling fragrance. If you don't know this one, do check it out. You must be into cumin. I know there's cumin haters out there, but also there are cumin lovers and this is a cumin lover's dream come true fragrance. Sad it's discontinued, but if you can get your hands on a bottle, it's Boise Mysterio from the house of Guerlain. It is a top-notch fragrance for me. See you guys later. Bye-bye.